That's what we're reacting to. What are we reacting to, Corbin Miles? Some stand-up. There you go. Comedy gold. Our stupid reactions. Tune in for the... Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction feed. It's Corbin. Rick. And you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Instagram and Twitter. content. It's Thanks juicy. Thanks for seeing Pace Ross. Follow our Twitter account. Ring the bell. You follow the follow the notification squad. Bam! Did you know that juicy content has been known to help people avoid COVID-19? That's not actually true, but uh, yeah, we, I don't want to get sued. Anyways, so today, uh, <laughs> uh, we are reacting to a stand-up comedy. It's an uh, essay on Sundar Bishai and media. Essay. I don't know who. All right. Oh, uh, Ar Aravind? How do you say his name, right? Uh, there in the middle. Aravind. Aravind. Aravind Asse? Or Aravind Sa. It's two capital letters, so I'm a little confused by it. Um, yeah, I don't think we've reacted to him yet. Um, but hopefully he's as funny as the last guy. Because <laughs> the last guy was hilarious. All right. <laughs> and that's exactly, that's exactly what you say when you're at a comedy club. I hope this next guy's as funny as the last one. <laughs> All right, ready? Yep. Three, two... One, go. I've been observing of late amongst Indians that uh, Indians tend to over-associate themselves, some Indians at least, tend to over-associate themselves with celebrities' achievements way more than we should. And I'll give you the best example of this. And let's take Chennai itself as an example. How many of you here know who Sundar Pichai is? Please raise your hands. Don't know who Sundar Pichai is. Okay, go home and Google. That'll be a fantastic experience for you. He's going to go home tonight, open his laptop, and type in Google, Hello Google. <laughs> Who is Sundar Pichai? <laughs> Who will reply saying, My daddy. <laughs> For those of you who still don't know who Sundar Pichai is, Sundar Pichai is the CEO of Google. And the day he became the CEO of Google, not only did he become the CEO of Google, he also became every Chennai's distant relative. <laughs> Until then, we didn't even know he was from our city. <laughs> That's how shameless we are. You should have seen his Wikipedia page. On the day he became the CEO of Google, in his Wikipedia page, in his bio section, once in half an hour, his school name kept changing. <laughs> at 11.30, I checked. It said Kendra Vidyalaya. I refreshed. At 12 o'clock, it said Bharti Vidya Bhavan. I refreshed. At 12.30, it said Vidya Amdhra. I only added my school. Fuck you, okay? <laughs> so, point being, according to Wikipedia, Sundar Pichai has studied in 28 schools in 14 years. <laughs> but I can understand. People are getting excited. Yeah, it's something. Someone has achieved something way more than they thought they are capable of. They're happy. But media, media are supposed to be professional. Media is supposed to report this in an objective way, right? Media were the worst. I remember reading an article from BuzzFeed, which put uh, an article with a headline that said, 20 facts that will shock you about Sundar Pichai. <laughs> I was like, okay, come on, shock me, shock me. <laughs> fact number one, fact number one, Sundar Pichai's father was an electrical engineer from Anna University. Full stop. <laughs> Where is the shock? Which is the shocking part, the electrical part maybe, yeah, correct. <laughs> Fact number two, Sundar Pichai though was different. Despite doing his civil engineering, he bravely deviated the odds and took up a job in Google, full stop. <laughs> he did engineering and took a software job. Like one million other South Indians in our country today. <laughs> This fact would have been shocking if it had read like this, which is, Sundar Pichai though was different. Despite doing a civil engineering, he bravely deviated the odds and went on to become a civil engineer. You would have been like, hey, congratulations, bro. And the worst was the Western media. When Western media started reporting this news, they have this tendency, which is that anytime anyone from a third world country comes and achieves something in a first world country, automatically they believe that man's story must have been a story of rags to riches. Why? Because they've only seen one movie about us. Which is? Slum dog millionaire, exactly. Imagine if we judge them for American pay. <laughs> what if we think all Americans will put their dick inside their favorite desert like that? Again? <laughs> That's not how it works, does it? So Sundar Pichai came from a That's normal great. privileged family and that his story had no drama. He just worked hard and with this privilege he achieved what he achieved. That's great. But that story can't be reported in America the way it is. Because the white man reading that and can't consume it. That has to be a sad story. 
it has to be a really dramatic story which is why they will start dramatizing aspects of his life which were never a problem in the first place just to make that story feel more third world for example new york times and washington post put articles that day saying sundar pichai and three other members of his poor upper middle class family <laughs> What is a poor upper middle class family? In Chennai, we call that posh. Okay. I bet this is true. They used to live in a cramped three-bedroom apartment. <laughs> What is a cramped three-bedroom apartment? In Bombay, they call it a gated community. <laughs> The point is that we are living in an age of misinformation. We have to check each and every message, the source, the context, and the agenda behind it. If not, it will lead to very, some very awkward situations. I'll give you another best example. When Abdul Kalam died, the next day they declared it a national holiday. You guys remember that? Yes, but my friend, he still went to work. I asked him, dude, Abdul Kalam has died. It's a national holiday. Why are you going to work? And he was like, Macha, in my office, even if I die, <laughs> they'll ask me to come to work, mark half day attendance, then go die. <laughs> No, I don't like the idea of declaring a holiday when calamities occur. Because when you declare a holiday, that means there's a lot of idle minds. Idle minds equals? Devil's workshop, correct. Devil's workshop equals? WhatsApp forwards, exactly, correct. <laughs> Because when there's a holiday and there's a lot of idle minds, there's a lot of people who start to take WhatsApp out and start spreading shit on WhatsApp from their own phone with only one goal in their mind. You know what their goal is? They want to see if the shit that they started that morning comes back to them by evening. If they get it back, they will get it back. The same thing happened. Abdul Kalam died. The whole country is mourning. But my father had the gall to send me this WhatsApp forward of this pink animated heart emoticon that goes like this with a text below that said, This is the heart of Abdul Kalam. This is the heart of Abdul Kalam. He is still alive. Pass this to 50 people in the next five minutes, he'll be reborn in Rameshwar. I say, what? <laughs> I called him and said, Daddy, stop! Do not pass this to anybody. Because I was like, first of all, his name is Abdul Kalam. His name is Abdul Kalam. And obviously, he doesn't believe in rebirth. Because he's a? Muslim. 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 No, scientist. What's wrong with you? <laughs> This is why I said, read the agenda context for every single thing. This is what they want you to see. At least that person next to him was like, Oh, I'm going to get a guitar. At that time, I said, Muslim! He's funny. I like it. Funny. He, I you like know, he, it. He reminds, me, he reminds me a little bit. Uh, his context and even his flow is very reminiscent of Virdas. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little, little bit. bit. Yeah. Yeah, reminiscent. Yeah. Reminiscent. He's very, very funny. Uh, <laughs> That whole bit about a American Pie is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> I actually don't. It, it's come up in a couple uh, videos, stand-ups, whatever. WhatsApp forwards. I I don't use WhatsApp. Like I only use WhatsApp now because I talk to some people that we met in India uh, that help with the channel, and so that's the only thing I use WhatsApp for. And so I've never gotten. Yeah, I think a, I've never gotten a WhatsApp forward. And I'm assuming it's like email forwarding, right? Assuming, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think stupid babies were. I know a lot of stupid babies were shocked because the first few months that are of our channel's existence, when we were getting a lot of stupid babies communicating with us, the first thing I was asked, you know, what's your WhatsApp? And and we, it's not a popular app here in the United States, like it is in India. I mean, it's just not used. Uh, yeah, because you have. Yeah. Unlimited texting uh, on your phones with uh, plans that you have for here in America. Uh, yep. so it's, it's not really needed very much here. Um, but yep. yeah, I use it. But yeah, it's, it's so strange. I, so I, I'm just assuming I'm reading into it that it's like email forwarding because that's the thing. Like your really um, paranoid aunt or uncle will email forward you these dumb articles uh, or, or stuff like that, uh, reshare this to 50 people, like Facebook stuff. Uh, and so that's what I'm assuming it is, but I don't quite understand. Yeah, it, it's it never is. never happened to me. It is. It would be the same thing of any, anything. It would be like email. That's a good example. It would be like email forwarding. And the more it gets sent around, if it came back to you, you would know that it kind of like went viral. Like everybody's been sharing it with everybody. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, and what he said – this is what was reminiscent to me which is a lot of the great comedians is that so much of what he was saying was rooted in truth 
Yeah. Uh, uh, very, very funny. I, I promise you what he said about BuzzFeed and the New York Times and the Washington Post, that that is exactly what they did. 100%. Yeah. Especially yep. BuzzFeed. <laughs> BuzzFeed is not even a real news thing. They're, yeah. just, they're just there for clicks. <laughs> That's that's what their company was founded on. Their YouTube company. It's, they're there for it's clicks. True. Anyways, they're, but yeah, it was funny. Let us know more from him and more comedians as well. Even if they don't speak English, I'll just have to um, send it to my subbers, and they'll have to the beautiful subbers uh, help us out there. But uh, let us know because we love some funnies. Our stupid reactions. Tune in for.